Hi everyone, I'm Ping Zhang from Loughborough University in the UK. In the next 15 minutes, I will introduce my current work, an investigation of the short crop propagation and slip behavior in a single crystal near-base superalloy using crystal plasticity CP and the extended finite element method X5. This research was conducted in collaboration with my supervisors, Constantinus and Liguo. My talk is organized as follows. First, I will give a brief introduction of the slip controlled short crack. Then, I will review some existing studies from the experimental and numerical aspects. After that, I will present the modeling methodology used in this work. Then the result will be shown and explained. And finally, I will sum up the main point of this work. Let's begin with the background. The material studied here is a nickel based superalloy, which has been extensively used in gas turbines. Studying the short crop propagation behavior can help us predict the fatigue life of components with crocs. Numerous experiments show that the short crocs exhibit a propagation behavior different from long crocs. In this case, crocs follow crystallographic directions showing tortuous path. As for propagation rates, fluctuations can be observed and is highly affected by the crystallographic orientation and temperature. So, to predict the fatigue life of macro crack, a numerical model that can characterize the mechanical behavior physically and capture the effect of microstructure is needed. There are several experimental techniques that we can use to study the macro crack initiation and propagation. For example, by comparing the crack path with the crystal structure, the controlling slip system can be addressed or using SEM can help us have a better insight into the fracture surface around the crack. If needed, you can use FIB technique to characterize the 3D geometry of cracks to show how they grow along or switch slip planes. This is a work from our group using an in-situ SEM to obtain real-time crack path, which is the experimental basis of my modeling work. Two orientations, 111 and 001, at both room temperature and high temperature were tested. The zigzag manner crack was observed, and the growth rate reveals that the crack at the early stage doesn't follow the Paris law, which is usually used to predict the growth rate of long cracks. Let's now have a look at a few numerical models developed to study crack propagation. Initially, people used the remeshing technique and crystal plasticity to model the macro crack. Then the crystallographic direction was introduced to have a slip controlled crack path. When the extended finite element is implemented in the commercial software like Abacus, it was combined with crystal plasticity. Then cracks in polycrystal or single crystal can be captured. Especially when the crystallographic crack path is specified, the zigzag manner crack can be recovered. Based on existing studies, we chose the crystal plasticity as the constitutive model to take into account the effect of microstructure and the extended finite element method to describe the dynamic crack growth. The crystal plasticity describes the deformation at a crystal level. In this slide, the main points of this well-established theory are listed. The total deformation tensor is decomposed into the elastic and plastic part, and the plastic velocity gradient is defined as the summation of resolved shear strain rate of each slip system. The resolved shear stress on the slip system can be obtained from PK1 stress. Then, shear strain rate follows the power law function, a hyperbolic function isotropic hardening and the Armstrong model kinematic hardening are used. The summation of the shear strain of all the slip system is the total cumulative shear strain. But in our research, we use the individual one as the damage indicator 
to study the activity of each sleep system. The extended finite element method is designed to describe the discontinuity in a much independent way by introducing enrichment functions into the standard FEM. As shown in the equation, n is the standard nodal function, h and f are enriched functions describing the displacement's discontinuity and the crack tip singularity. In Abacris, it can be combined with the cohesion behavior. Instead of function f, a special type of nodes, fountain nodes, are introduced. Before damage, each fountain node and its corresponding real nodes are tied together. If the element is damaged, they will be separated and the element will become two elements containing both real and fountain nodes. To simulate the dynamic crack, a user damage subroutine is needed to specify the fracture parameter and the normal vector of crack growth direction. Here, the normal direction of slip plan is provided according to the geometric relation. Following are the results of our work. Before moving to the crack growth model, the material constitutive behavior was calibrated. To implement the crystal plasticity behavior in Abacus, Huang's UMAT was modified by adding kinematic hardening contribution. Parameters were calibrated from the cyclic loading experimental data of 111 orientation under both 825 degrees and the room temperature. Then a linear interpolation was employed to predict the response under 625 degrees. The results of strain stress behavior of first cycles and the evolution of stress level show that the CP model can recover the response of this material. The model used for crack propagation is a 2D model, having the same geometry as the core part of the specimen. A predefined crack was introduced to make sure the crack grows from the center of the notch. The x fine domain allows the crack to grow to about 100 microns, and the average element size is 2.5 microns. The upper edge was subjected to a sine curve stress. The critical fracture value is set as 0.06 for room temperature to allow enough cycles at acceptable time expense. Then the value for high temperature was calculated by assuming that they are related to the critical result of the shear stress and stage 1 stress. Since the short crack propagation in a single crystal is more dependent on the crystal orientation and temperature, two orientations 111 and 001 were simulated under both room and high temperatures. Before the first extension of cracks, the distribution of individual cumulative shear strain are plot. As you can see, the produced field for various slip systems differ significantly in both intensity and spatial distribution, showing a symmetric butterfly-shaped pattern around the tip. Comparing this result, we could find something interesting. For example, we may compare the result between two orientations we noticed that nearly all the slip systems were active in 111 orientation, but only four major ones were activated in 001. When comparing the result of two temperatures, it's noted that result of the 650 degrees are more dispersed, which means higher strain level have been reached in a broader zone. By comparing the distribution, we can also deduce which slip system were the most active and occupied which area around the crack tip. The distribution are expected to affect both the crack path and the propagation rates. In fact, a more scattered field indicated that a larger area will meet the critical value for crack growth. Also, areas dominated by different slip systems can result in competing crack path and therefore increase or decrease the propagation rate. After that, cracks continue growing to the boundary. Interestingly, the numerical response obtained has many similarities to experiments. 
For example, multiple deflections can be observed in 111 oriented samples where only a few exist in 001. And all the crack directions are also the same as the experimental ones corresponding to crystallographic directions. However, there's still a mismatch regarding the amplitude of cracks. The numerical result in 650-111 shows a smaller amplitude than the experiment. There are many reasons may account for this mismatch. For example, the effect of creep and oxidation at hand temperature, or the defects contained in the specimen such as wood and inclusions. And from the experimental observation, multiple slip bands were formed around the crack. This phenomenon was not captured in our simulation. Further, we analyzed the evolution of SASS value around the crack tape with increasing loading cycles. Four colors here represent four slip plans. The plot indicates which slip plan has the highest SASS in an element. And the crack is supposed to grow along the corresponding direction. For instance, if the crack's tip stays in the green area, it's controlled by minus 1 1 plan and is supposed to go downwards at 154 degrees. It's observed that the specimen is mainly dominated by two slip plans, the green color and the blue. Now, by tracking the change of slip activity, we can know when and how the crack changes its direction. For instance, at the 17th cycle, the crack tip A is at the blue area and then it goes up and enter the green area B, which will make the crack propagate downwards to point C. Moreover, if we look at the slip plan area ahead of the crack tip, it's pushed forward and its size diminishes as the crack grows. In general, the crack tries to enlarge the domain to which it belongs in order to maintain its propagation direction. When this is not possible, the deflection is observed. At the end, the crack lengths are correlated to the number of cycles. The numerical result has been scaled up to enable a direct comparison with the experimental result. The overall trends of the simulation are consistent with the experiment. We notice that the numerical curves in this plot are not smooth but present a step change of shape with increasing loading cycles, exhibiting the same response as experimental results. This behavior is attributed to the multiple deflected crack path. Meanwhile, the crack propagation rate, the ADN, was correlated to the range of stress intensity factor, delta K, which represents the extent of crack tape singularity. The result also show the same trend as observed in the experiment, that is to say, a deceleration followed by an acceleration in the crack growth rate. At the end, let me summarize my presentation. A computational model comprising CP and X5 was employed to evaluate the short crack propagation in a nearby single crystal superalloy. The cumulative shear strain of individual slip system was used as a criteria for crack onside to simulate the crystallographic crack path. Details of crack deflections were further explained by tracking the evolution of slip plant activity. It's capable of predicting the torturous path and irregular growth rate for short cracks and allows for further modification. Thank you for listening. That's the end of my presentation. If you are interested in this research, you can contact us or have a look at our website to discover some other fascinating topics.